Well, y'all, we're here at Realtree Farms. We're joined by a very special guest, Dad and I are, Dustin Huff, who is holding the U.S. typical record for whitetail. Dad, looking around this room right here, we it feels good to finally be in the presence of a big deer. Well, you know, I'm, I'm taking our mouse down. You know, we thought we we thought we had some big ones. So, I, I felt good about some of them until yeah. he's he's sitting right. There's here. still time for him because he's a lot younger than I am. But you know, my my 180 kind of stuff doesn't really measure up to <laughs> what we're sitting to. But you know, congratulations on a great deer. Thank you. I appreciate y'all having me out. Yeah, you know the. Uh, we have a lot of questions. I know you've repeated the story, you know, several times. I had an opportunity in uh, North American Whitetail to mm -hmm. read the, the story, and it really resonated with me. I, I, I came to work, and I said, God, we, this guy is, is this, this close to the world record. Obviously, you know, U.S. record, but, yep. you know, take us through the, that moment of, uh, I know you know the deer wasn't there. You, yep. you know, I, I read the situation, but if you will, just kind of explain to Tyler and I how that came around. Well, I mean, I got up in a stand. Three o'clock that afternoon, took my climber, same farm I've been hunting, 185 acre hog farm I've been hunting since I was a kid. Killed my first squirrel there, first <laughs> buck there. Um, yeah, I've been hunting that whole week. Um, I always take off the last weekend of October, hunt hard that weekend, Halloween, and yep. always hunt the whole first week of November. And so I was on day seven, day eight of eight to 10 hour days. I killed a doe on uh, Halloween on that yep. Sunday. And so, yeah, I was just trying to, I got four set stands, and I was just going to mix it up, took my climber out. I didn't even know where I was going to go that evening. And I got my climber out of my Jeep and went into a corner, and that's where I went. Got up across the creek, got up on this little draw that I used to hunt whenever I was in high school quite a bit, yep. and picked a tree, sawed off two limbs, got up. <laughs> so it was really, it was pretty random. You yeah, choosing that just, spot. So yeah, you, really haven't, just, you haven't sat in that spot or that area since high school? Yeah, I always just leave that to the deer just because it's an old four-wheeler trail I used to ride when I was a kid and uh, just hadn't been back there. I always just left it to the deer since the past six, seven years or so. And I always hunt the east side of the farm, and that's on the west side. And I just decided, I'm going to go back there. Nobody's been back there. So right. I just decided. So it's not like you didn't see a bunch of sign or anything that was like, man, I'm, this is why I'm going to put this here. You just... You went off Feels basically. Good about it. You yeah, went off your gut. That's I always about. go off my gut, man. Everything, and that's. I was just like, I don't know what told me to go yeah. back there. But I just. Well, you know, I had, I had the fortune of him giving me the coordinates of it. And I got on all that. <laughs> yeah, they're good. I, I, I even got, got it down. To, I even got it down to the tree. So, good. Uh, share, share that with me. I'll, I'll yeah. take. I'll text you from the tree. <laughs> but you know, if, if that land or property, and a lot of us being whitetail enthusiasts. Uh, was there a lot of history of some pretty good deer in the in the area, you know, where you hunt? Yeah, I mean, we know there's good deer there, but, I mean, we don't think over 160, even 150, we're like, wow, that's, a, you know, the right. biggest ever taken on that property my dad killed was 153, and that was when I was a freshman, so yeah. 13 years ago or so, and that was the biggest deer, and my biggest deer on that property was one four, or 134. And that, yeah. I killed that in 2020, about 300 yards from where I killed him. That's awesome. So were you getting were you getting any kind of pictures or were you seeing other big deer in the area? Like did you know there were some other big deer you were after? Or I mean I know you didn't know this deer was there, but mm -hmm. was there you were just kinda you were just going to hunt. Yeah, I, I just I've hunted this farm for so long. I just I, yeah. I know where I've seen deer, I know where I've killed deer, and I just kinda base it off wind and you know, my set stands and if set stands and I'll just take my climber out and pick a tree, go enjoy the morning or evening. And that's kinda what I did that afternoon so so kind of go through kind of that that evening i know when you first got in there you were telling us last night you weren't seeing a whole lot of deer is that no, right i i killed a doe on halloween and all every buck i seen was little baskets or fork heads coming through probably passed up four or five of them and yeah i just i was just trying to beat my 134 from, yeah, right from the year before you, you, you did that but was <laughs> yeah. that the only deer you saw that night that was the only deer i seen yep from you don't need to see one yeah yeah you, you do you know, need to see one so that, that that's a pretty good one to see and when you know as, as an outdoor enthusiast and, and hunter all my life and and tyler and others the same way uh take us through that moment uh when you first laid eyes on all right well so like i said i got in about three and the whole time i'm in this stand three four five six o'clock hits and i ain't seen a deer and I, I'm, I just watched the sun, I mean, I hit the horizon. And I'm about to text my dad like, hey, no deer again, you know, no buck. And as I'm about to pull my phone out, I look to my left, and he was about 70 yards down in the creek bed. And he had his head down, and all I could see was how wide he was. And then he put his head up, and I could just see the right side of that main beam. And he started coming up my ridge, and I was just like, 
I was just trying to figure <laughs> out. This happened. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was I about passed out. I mean, it was the adrenaline was unreal yeah. of just tr- and also watching him, you know, I was just in awe. Like, what is this deer doing in a woods that I deer hunt, you know? And then I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to shoot yeah. him at. I'm just trying to pick a spot, you know? Now, when the moment of truth comes, you know, for us hunters yep. who have been there, mm-hmm. you know, the nerves do settle in, especially, you know, something that obviously, you know, this size. Did you try to call? I, I got a little ritual that I do. I always try to calm myself before the event. And, and a lot of times when I'm saying, I, I haven't seen this yet, but, you know, the deer they're in <laughs> yeah. here. But when something's coming up, I have, I have a uh, deal that I practice. I try to, I'm watching the situation, but I put my mind somewhere else. Yeah. I'll think about odd thoughts, yeah. you know, just to calm me, you know, through it. Did, did that ever happen to you, or you just so caught up? All I was thinking was, <laughs> "What am I going to do?" Now? Yeah, what? Am, where am I going to shoot this deer? And if yeah. I miss him, my buddies ain't going to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no pictures to say it. Yeah, anybody, no, right? nothing. And so, yeah, I mean, he. Once I knew, like, I only had like, once I knew he was heading west, he started quartering away a little bit, and I'm like, he's going to head west towards this cornfield. The whole time I was sitting in that tree, I kept saying to myself, uh, every hour, I should have been up close to that cornfield, you know. And so once I saw that he was going to start heading west, like I had to whistle at him yeah. to stop him. And when I stopped him, of course, two sapling trees right in the boiler room where I got to shoot him at. And I couldn't shoot him. And he's just, we're just staring at each other. And he doesn't even know I'm there. He How just, long was that? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not even sure. It could have been a few seconds, 30 yeah. seconds, 10 yeah. seconds. And I just told myself, like, I gut shot him. No, I can't gut shot him. Like, I'm going to one step. I maybe have one step. But if he don't stop on my next whistle he's not gonna yeah. he's gone he's in the brush and he's gone and so yeah i just let him take a right i whistled again and he took he threw his left leg forward and i had to lean out to the left side to throw an arrow in him all right so the, the air is in the air you know we, we I had a friend of mine <laughs> always said when there's an air in the air there's always hope yep so uh if that air is going there take us through that moment of you know up to the impact maybe so i just heard the smack yeah. And I, I was guessing him at 40 yards. I didn't, I didn't even have time to range find him. Yeah. Uh, so I put my 30-yard pin just about three inches high on his shoulder and yeah. let it fly. And I just heard the smack. I didn't even, the adrenaline was so, like, I kind of blacked out, I feel like. And so I heard the smack, and he just headed straight west. And all I could see was his yeah. antlers running away through the sat. And I'm just looking, and he ran about 50, 60 yards, stopped, looked around both ways. And I was like, go down, go down, you know. He flicked his tail three or four times, and that's when he started doing the dance and tumbled back into the holler that he came from. And I just put my hands up. I go, let's go. You know, I was just fired up. <laughs> like, it, you know, biggest deer I'd we, ever seen in my life. So I, you're, you're in the tree stand. I can only imagine the excitement mm-hmm. and everything that you had. And, and you actually got a chance to see the deer go down. Yeah, you watched him fall. So you're getting down out of the tree stand now. Do you run, walk, and, and obviously there's a time in there that you can't see him once you hit the ground. Yeah. Were you a little bit nervous trying to go to him? Yeah, so I didn't even get out of the stand right then. I called my girlfriend first, told her, like, hey, I just smoked a 180 class deer, and she's like, what does that even mean, you know? And I'm like, it's big, it's the biggest deer. So I hung up with her, and then I called my dad, and I was yeah. like, hey, Pops, I, I beat you. I think I beat you by about 30 inches, like, on this one. And he was like, there ain't no way. I said, you're going to need to get here right now. And so I called the property owner, uh, his sons, my dad, my brother-in-law. But, and I didn't go up to see him until they all got there. And I, we I think I've been down running. Oh, know? man. And yeah. we, we got up to him. He was on the side of that big ridge. He almost fell all the way in. Yeah. He was right on the side of it. And we just all just started going. What, what about that? Yeah. And well, in our head, we're thinking 180-class deer. And the property owner goes, I'd say he's high 160s. <laughs> I'd say he was about 50 inches off. <laughs> yep, exactly. Well, you know, we, we uh, you know, just had to be so thrilled. And I guess mm-hmm. the word got out to everybody in the community. And certainly uh, on something like this, especially, you got telephone ringing off the wall. People want to come see it. So how did you handle that in that few days? Man, that next day was crazy. I mean, uh, we took pictures in because yeah. my buddies that came over and I was like, you're going to need to get professional pictures. And I just laughed at him like, no, man, like, you know, it's a big deer. But and they're like, no, you're going to want yeah. to. So had her come over. And then after that, I mean, there was people just 
buddies coming over and then people I didn't know coming over going, hey man, we heard about the deer, like we just want to see it. And I was opening up, I was opening up the big walk-in cooler. Heck, we had two other deer hanging up in there, you know, mine and my nephews that we killed on Halloween and just opening up and people were, I mean, down the driveway, people down the road, trucks pulling up just wanting to see this deer. So who was the first person to put a tape on him just to kind of, just I'm, rough... I'm going to back up a question just a second. Uh, I, I hinted to, uh, we talked just briefly a little while ago. Did you sleep with him the next day or two? I mean, did, did I just you, kept. I couldn't, I couldn't have not left anything like that alone. I just kept on going and checking on him. Yeah. We threw a lock on the cooler and that, <laughs> yep, parked it around back and just hoping nobody would, you know, cut the lock or nobody did. And then when you realized, of course, you know, everybody not realized the big deer, but when uh, mm -hmm. the question before you, you imagine him, did people start coming out and say, I got some trail camera pictures of him? This was the next day, like right. after I posted it on Facebook. So I didn't post it till the next right. day. Right. And then that's whenever the neighbors come over and was like, that's him. And then they started Dang. showing me all the trail cam pictures and all the history they had with him and just oh. the stories of, you know, seeing him in the woods or. Well, let me tell you, being a land neighbor, we don't tell our land neighbors what we got. Exactly. You know, just you know we, <laughs> yep. we got some good land neighbors next to us. Yep. But uh, I, that's just uh, that's awesome right there. But you talk, I mean, it's not like there were a bunch of big deer running around that area, yeah. you know. So you talk about a unicorn of all unicorns. One, this is a a record that has held up for a really, really long time too. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the Jordan buck was shot back in nineteen fourteen. So, I mean, there's a good chance this never gets broken. Mm -hmm. But if it does, it, there's a great chance it won't get broken in our lifetime. You know, to see something like this again, I mean, it's so magnificent and just. uh I mean, it just proves what a rarity something like this is. You know, has. when we go, we go through history of, of the whitetail world, which uh, has so many millions of people who obviously thrive every day to shoot a 130 or 140 or 120, it doesn't make any yep. difference. But have something like this, you know, we were, uh, you know, I wrote down just a little while ago, just to make sure my measurement's right. But, you know, the Jordan buck, uh, you know, when we just uh, made sure our numbers were right back in 1914, 206 and 5 eighths. And uh, this right here, you know, I, I had the privilege, we talked about this earlier, almost 30 years ago, I had a privilege to sit down with Milo Hansen mm -hmm. on the Canadian world record, world record of 213 and, you know, 5'8". And then you, when you look at this, and I've, I've seen both, and David Blanton, you know, with us, yep. had seen both and back in the early days and obviously now, but when you look at this score, 211 and 4'8". It shattered it. it. It's just like, holy smokes you know you're you're right there with the handsome buck and mm -hmm. you know when i when i look back and and people you know always for 30 years since i was i was sitting down at milo's house and in, in, in a february cold february we were looking at his deer uh, the uh every deer is unique in its yeah. size and its shape you know mm -hmm. the mass or whatever the time length and uh milo's deer you know uh every deer is different that's one thing i like about whitetail you'll never see two racks basically the same nope. And when I sat down with Milo's and saw all these long tines without a whole lot of mass to it, mm -hmm. and then having the privilege to see yours and, and, and in person, uh, the first thing jumps out of you, holy smokes, it is a big deer with the mass. <laughs> yeah, mass, it's crazy. It's just, it's crazy. It's and, and again, uh, when, when you come off uh, 211 and 4 eighths versus 213 and 5 eighths, the largest deer of all time, it just has to give you a, a huge sense of pride. Yeah. I mean, I just still can't believe it. Yeah. You know, a place that I deer hunt, that I've been deer hunting my whole life, you don't, I would never even think a deer, a 180 inch deer would ever even be out there, yet alone a 200 plus world record, you know? Right. It's just something I never even was on my mind. Yeah. And to think how close you were for being right there with Milo, we yep. talked about it yep. also, just the kicker coming off the brow. Yep. I mean, so, show, show us that right now. People just don't realize on. On a lot of time, the Boone and Crockett score, you know, it's, uh, you know, the deer have to just match up almost perfect, you know, mm -hmm. for its deductions. But to yep. so that point, show us a little bit what, uh, what uh, the deduction on there is. So this was the only abnormal point yeah. on the deer, and it was like an inch and two eights, I believe. Yeah. It would have put it right. And it so let me, let me, yeah, let, I'm just looking at the numbers here. You're right there. Yeah. You know, for it would have been so close because everything else was within eighths. Each G three, each G four, each G. I think the back one was a little bit over a couple ways, but yeah. everything else was. That's just, what's so impressive, yeah. this, dude. Just the lack of uh, deduction that you have, you know, have moving mm -hmm. right to score. But yeah, 
You know, we're we're thrilled to share this, and and uh, Tyler and I both, and uh, and all officers at Realtree are, are very proud of you. And uh, we want to thank you for wearing Realtree too. You yeah. know, what I mean that that uh, when I when I started hearing about the deer, didn't know much about it, and uh, of course. Uh, uh, having an opportunity to see you wearing real tree, we thank you for that, and and that's just a small part of it. But uh, just uh, uh, you know, our folks here got a chance to know you here in the last little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you're most deserving. Thank you. And uh, you know, to, to handle something like this in the whitetail world, no matter what it is, it's a, it's a huge honor for us to share this with the real tree people and other people and yourself. Uh, obviously, being the beneficiary of such a magnificent mm -hmm. deer, a lot to be proud of. Yeah, and I, that's something I was going to say, too. Just meeting you last night, I was already super happy and read all the articles and yeah. seen all the stories, but having had a chance to meet you, it's like, man, it could not have happened to a better person. And I'm not yeah. just saying that. You know, for something like this to happen to anybody's awesome, but for you and just your story, and uh, it couldn't happen to a better guy. You know, and I tell you, uh, your, your mother and I, and uh, when I started getting, every, getting information uh, about the deer and, mm -hmm. and uh, learning a little bit about you months ago, I'm sitting there, and uh, I, I had the, uh, the the article in North American Whitetail, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thumbing through it, and I see Singer. <laughs> and I said, "Okay, you know, uh, hey Alexa, yep, play music by Dustin Huff." And all of a sudden, I go, "Holy smoke, the can sing a little bit better than me, not not, not much." Not, not, you, know, I, yeah. I, you know, I am known for my talent and, yep. and, and my dancing. You know, oh yeah. Of it. But you know, I, I sat down with my wife literally a couple of months ago, and we even did it yesterday morning uh, when we got up. But uh, you know, such a talent, you know, from the music aspect of it too. And we, I really enjoyed your song way before I knew you and had an opportunity to meet you. But uh, you know, you know, we got a chance to visit a little bit last night. But yeah. uh, you're very talented, and Thank uh, you. so we we enjoyed the music. And and like I said this morning, your mama. And I, we got a chance to, you know, listen to it again. Mm, I know you listen to it about it. You listen to Dustin about it every morning. <laughs> no, I tell you, I, I like it. Yeah. He does. I like it. He really does. You know, I mean, we we uh, we get Alexa on there, and she goes right to Spotify. But you know, that's a talent in itself. And you know, and uh, I just I just hope that uh, you know we talked a little bit about last night. You, mm -hmm. You're you're a very talented person. Thank you. And uh, this obviously is great right here. And this mm -hmm. is what you're going to be known for for in the whitetail <laughs> world. But the uh, the singing talent. Did you start that at an early age? Was it more natural or? Uh, so my dad was in a band for about seven years. He was the front man, singer. Yeah. Uh, wrote a few songs. You know, he wasn't trying to make it in Nashville or anything. He right. was just a guy that it, and him and his buddies went yeah. and played. You know, bars and the Eagles or mm -hmm. receptions, whatever it was. And I'd always tag along. And when I turned twelve, I said, "Hey, teach me how to play that six string." And he's the one who taught me. You know, four or five chords. And then I just kind of took it from there. I uh, wrote my first song when I was 15, and then when I turned 17, that's I decided, like, I'm not going to college. I'm going to go what try it, yeah. you know, see what I can do in Nashville, and been going back and forth ever since. Well, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just gonna, I was going to ask, too, I don't, it's something that we have not had a chance to talk about, but how has this deer impacted or changed your life, whether it be in music or just yeah. everyday life? Has it, has it just been kind of a whirlwind, like you haven't had a whole lot of time to sit and think about it, or... Kind of what's what's that been like since since that day? Man, it's it's been a lot of traveling, a lot of yeah. a lot of time on the road, which is cool. Just because I get to share my story and people to see, people want to see this deer, yeah. you know. And it's it's crazy the reaction we've been getting on the road and just everybody. Oh, we came to see the huff buck, you know. And I'm like, that's just nuts to me, you know. A deer I shot. It's just it's crazy. Well, but, you know. But, the thing is, and I know that uh, you know with with Michael was up here, and you got a chance to meet Michael earlier mm -hmm. today, but. I'm going to ask a favor out of you. You didn't know I was going to ask this, but if you can find his guitar over there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I, I don't care. To, uh, I'm going to get uh, Dylan now. Been playing, Dylan's been over there playing on your guitar. Okay, yeah. And I didn't know Dylan was a cover band uh, over oh, in Auburn, is. Alabama. You know, we can't tell a whole lot of people that, Dylan. But uh, pass that over there to the guitar. And then let me tell you something. I've only heard you on Spotify. So yep. now you're really now I'm on the spot. Now you're on you're on the spot now. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what y'all thinking? Man, I'm gonna cry if you play the dog. I song. know that's <laughs> what I was wondering. You want to hear the dog I song? I want to hear it again, but I'm, I kind of got choked up earlier hearing it. Play that again because it, right. it was it was good dang good. I think Bill will like that. I will like it. So I wrote this about uh, my dog. He got hit by a truck. I was down in Nashville and 
uh, mom and dad called me and said, hey, cash is gone. And about a month or two later, I wrote this song. Um, you know, all of us that are close to our animals, we, yep. we are a weird dog family. And, yep. uh, so certainly get it. Yep. yep. So it's called Good Dog. We used to love drinking beer Out on the front porch steps We did everything together Whole lot of nothing now and then My best friend, my right hand man Was always there when I called The only reason for him leaving Makes any sense at all Is God must have needed a good dog just like I did, someone said in shotgun to ride down streets of gold with and lay around and listen to me wishing he wasn't gone. But I ain't mad, I can't blame the man at all. Cause God must have needed a good dog. Guess he needed a fishing buddy Best damn one I had Or maybe he needed a little company Pray one day I'll get to ask And I know it's a better place But I won't say I don't miss him I can just see him now Running through those gates Knowing why the good Lord picked him Cause God must have needed a good dog just like I did Someone said in shotgun To ride down streets of gold with And lay around and listen To me wishing he wasn't gone But I ain't mad, I can't blame the man at all Cause God must have needed a good dog Must have needed a damn good dog And I know that he's in good hands Until I see him again Yeah, I'll see you again But until then Well, God must have needed a good dog Just like I did Someone said in shotgun to ride down streets of gold with And lay around and listen to me wishing he wasn't gone But I ain't mad, I can't blame the man at all No, I ain't mad, I can't blame the man at all Cause God must have needed a good dog Must have needed a damn good dog. Mm -hmm. Thank it. That's good. That's so awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love that song. I, I do too. I, I, that, that's not on the no, no, thing I've been looking to. I wrote that. Uh, it's probably been three years now, two or three years ago since he uh, passed away. And uh, the first five six months that I wrote it, I couldn't even play it out. You know, it was just, I, I couldn't get through the song without, you know, tearing up or, so I never played it in any shows or anything. And uh, so, yeah. You know, we've all been there. You yep. know, I think that's the neat thing about uh, the love of an animal is just unbelievable to, to mm -hmm. you and the love you give back to your dogs and stuff. Yep. And we've had, uh, been fortunate to have a lot of good labs and bird dogs over the years of being an outdoor family. And, it's, it's, uh, they get you. They, yep. they, they're in they your do. heart and they're part of the family. They're family. You know, yep. you talk about the family aspect of it. And yep. So uh, that's beautiful. I, I, Thank uh, you. I feel privileged to have heard it because uh, it, it's a touching song for all of us. Thank you. Yep. So, Good one. Now, the, uh, pull another one out of there for <laughs> you. Know. All right. Uh, this is one called I Should Be Fishing, which we were talking about uh, fishing heard. earlier yep. today. Yep. And uh, so I wrote this uh, about Nashville traffic. Yep. 
you know, how terrible it is there. It's worse. It just keeps getting worse and more and more high rises going up and that's kind of what I wrote this song about. So it's called I Should Be Fishing. I should be fishing Somewhere on a boat floating suntan cold can chilling Grilling in a five pound large mouth good time grinning Yeah, I should be fishing Hell, I should be in a deer stand Sipping coffee from a cup Watching the woods wake up spitting red and man Waiting on a big bug to slip up 30-30 in my hands Yeah, I should be in a deer stand A hundred mile away from a seven day rat race Hate this backed up traffic Far from these skyline night lights Concrete high rise makes it hard to find them stars Catch a sunset, wish I was down a back road Back home, sitting on the best damn honey hole I know Shouldn't be caught up in this fast life City living, man, when I should be fishing Yeah, I should be way out there Without a worry or care in the world Instead of staying still stuck here With some dude in a suit honking in my review I could use a counting line beer Gotta get out of here A hundred mile away from a seven day rat race Hate this backed up traffic Far from these skyline night lights Concrete high rise makes it hard to find them stars Catch a sunset, wish I was down a back road Back home, sitting on the best damn honey hole I know Shouldn't be caught up in this fast life City living, man I should be fishing Man I should be fishing I should be taking it slow, taking it in with a west wind blowing just right. A hundred mile away from a seven day rat race, hate this backed up traffic. Far from these skyline night lights, that concrete high rise makes it hard to find them stars. Catch a sunset, wish I was down a back road, back home. Sitting on the best damn honey hole I know Shouldn't be caught up in this fast life City living Man, I should be fishing Man, I should be fishing Good stuff, man. Thank you. Great stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you. That is all. You know, the, you know, you, you had a line in there. Uh, I used to, I tell people this all the time when they ask about, you know, hunting and all that. Mm -hmm. My favorite time of day is daylight. I love yeah. that for me to go to the, the silence of things coming to life. Yes. You know, and that when that sun comes up over the horizon and the birds start chirping mm -hmm. and moving and squirrels coming up down the trees and just the activity of deer movement or hearing a turkey gobble. Mm -hmm. But that's that's my favorite time of, of all day. Is that, me that, too. That, uh, breaking the day. Yep, me too. You almost feel like you're getting the privilege to see something you, you yep. shouldn't be able to see. That's what I mean. You almost feel like a fly on the wall. Yep. You know, that's my favorite part yeah. of the yeah, day I, too. I, I tell people this sometimes. I was I'll never forget. I was uh, in Mexico whitetail hunting, and uh, and we were kind of in the middle of nowhere, but they had mountains off in the distance, and and the. Uh, the, the people who we were hunting with took us to the stand that morning. We were sitting on tripods, and I was bow hunting. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it was you know typical uh, South Texas, you know Mexico, low brush. And and I'm sitting there, and it was um, quiet. And and we were I was in a tripod. I had one of our camera guys, you know, seven eight yards behind me in a tripod, and we're we're trying to be quiet and still. And I just never I never that one moment of uh, being in Mexico, the woods started coming alive, mm -hmm. and I could. I could hear deer, and all of a sudden the birds started chirping, and and I had not been on this tree stand before on this, on this tripod. But when the sun came up, the mountains off in the distance, 
just like God just reached down and said, yep. you're here. Yep. You know, so uh, yep. that was one of my favorite moments. Uh, yeah. During one of my hunting. And I do it everywhere. You know what? They're on our farm yeah. here. But though, that breaking day is, uh, is, is he's, special. He's saying, look at this. Oh, absolutely. Look, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know if I need to burn him up for many more songs. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging this right now. I, I got the privilege to hear several of them this morning already yeah. with, with Michael. So, yeah. man, we, we appreciate you coming. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate y'all having me. Yeah. You know, the one one thing, too, I'm going to throw something else that we, we hit on. Uh, it, it, you know, we, we talked about this coming from lunch a little while ago. And, you know, we, we're uh, the hunting and the fishing community in, at large. What's really neat, you know, people say, oh, you, you hunted with Chipper Jones, you, you know, you hunted with uh, Blake Shelton, you, you know, mm -hmm. not trying to throw names, yeah. but, you know, I told you this on the way here, they're people. Yep. They just, some of them hit a, a curveball a little bit better than others. Yep. You know, some of them drive a race car just a little bit faster, but what really drew uh, friendship with a, a lot of these people we've been so lucky and fortunate to meet over the years, just the love of the outdoors. Yep. It's their love of the outdoors to us. It's not so much that. Uh, you know, uh, have good friends in NASCAR and other, but the love of the outdoors, you know, the hunting and fishing, you touched on it all in that last song. Yep. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege for us to be able to share with you and the outdoors and uh, couldn't be any more deserving uh, of, of this buck, you know, to go in your hands. Thank you. And so uh, we look we look forward to doing some more stuff. Now the yeah. big thing now we got to go hunting. Well, he's and never. Yeah. Well, something we talked about. He's yeah. never turkey hunted. Never been. And he's got hunt. a lot of turkeys well, in Indiana. Yep. There's a lot of turkeys. Well, there's a lot of turkeys right here on the farm. There's a lot of turkeys here too. Yeah. If you don't have anything to do the next month, it opens up. <laughs> yeah. You know, April second. So don't yep. go anywhere for a while. And there's good hunting in Tennessee too. Some of yeah. the best turkey hunting I've ever had is in Tennessee. Really? So yeah. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to make it a point sometime this spring to go and do that. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Because once you do that, you'll be addicted to they that said too. I'll be hooked. That's what I think. Well, let me tell you something. We we appreciate. Thank you for taking the time. We're we're totally honored and happy for you with this deer. And I know it's been a life changing experience. But uh, you know, the, the something else we hit on just a little while ago too, when we were eating lunch, we got talking about sports. Yep. And uh, your little sister uh, is a good softball pitcher and, and high school player and travel ball. Your family does the same thing. Yep, my mom's a fast pitch coach, and yep. both my sisters played travel, fast pitch yeah, softball. I was, I was always traveling with them when I was just a little kid. Well, my 16 year old uh, daughter, and of course, obviously, y'all being a sports family, and your mom and everything, you mm -hmm. know, uh, she was fortunate enough to meet Jenny Finch today, you mm -hmm. know, for the softball and have lunch with her and some of her softball buddies. But uh, if, if you're we, we, my daughter may need some lessons from somebody. So she, she's, uh, she's a pretty good pitcher. You know, yeah. hopefully uh, her, her desire, dreams to come, you know, yep. go to college and, and pitch somewhere. So that'll be awesome. Yeah, but he got, got a lot of family. And, and let me tell you the other thing he's a golfer. I know. I play you a know. little golf. Yeah. Yeah. He plays, he plays <laughs> a little He's golf. going next week to play all week. Yep. Going down to South Carolina with some buddies and playing for about four days. That'll be fun. Be a yep. good little getaway. Yeah. We go, we've been going for the past four or five years now. And, it's just a good yeah. time. Do you have a, uh, for, for, for people listening, do you have some, some shows you'll be at coming up that people can come see you and, and well, the workout? We, we got, I got him booked already. I've got, I'm, we, uh, we're, uh, we're going to be his agent now. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to make music on Yeah. Yep. Well, cool deal. Well, man, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, you yeah, this coming is, down here this and sharing this deer with us. Yep. Yeah.